How are you doing? Welcome to S Class Live number 13. My name is Lars Christensen, and thank you so much for taking the time to watch these videos. We have a cracker of, uh, of questions and answers on this specific, uh, <laughs> this specific episode. Woo! Uh, so many good ones. This is just me trying to answer as many uh, of my emails as I can over the next, I don't know, hour or so. Um, hopefully adding some Fusion 360 value to you. And I think we're just going to jump into it. Like I said, so many different things, so many good things in uh, in this one here. The first one is from Paul. Uh, Paul sent um, a longer email, which is all right, uh, but pretty much talking about how to organize your folder structure inside of Fusion 360 when you are imparting models. So what Paul does is Paul is using Inventor and then right now, he is exporting that Inventor file as an IGES file, what is a neutral format. Um, so he can bring that into Fusion 360 to do his CAM uh, inside of there. Now, um, actually, Paul sent uh, kind of like he wants a folder structure uh, where he has, he does like clay extruders. And I don't know much about clay extruders, but he wants, you know, the... And this goes for most people, I think. You want kind of like a project folder with a project name. And then he wants some folders underneath it uh, for his Inventor fi files, IPTs, for his IGES files, and then for his uh, Fusion CAM files. Now, Paul, I hope that uh, you're going to see that I'm going to make your life a lot easier <laughs> in, uh, in this example here. So let me show you how I would do this. So let me just switch over here. Um, now, we inside of Fusion 360 right now. I'm actually going to jump out of that um, because there is a much better way to deal with this, Paul. We can completely eliminate the whole fact of IGES files. We can bring in uh, Inventor files right here. If you click right here, you could actually just bring in your Inventor files, click your, your, your file and, and bring in... Uh, in here, you will see that you have the, the inventor files, but it gets better than that. You can actually do something better. And I've talked about this in another live stream. I, have, <laughs> I haven't actually done it myself quite yet, but you can actually export all your files here over to a Fusion team. Now, I do have Fusion team. What you need to do is you need to go out and you need to Google Fusion 360 blog post July 24th. There was a product update in this one. Kiching talks about, um, in under the data, data management section, he talks about Fusion Team and how you guys all are now entitled to Fusion Team and you can get rid of your uh, individual accounts. I haven't done it myself yet, primarily just because um, I've been a little bit lazy. Um, and, and But what you can do is you can get all your, your individual accounts over to a Fusion Team. However, I do have Fusion Team Paul, I want to show you the best workflow to do this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and do that. I'm going to switch over to a Fusion team here I have called um, the Tech Marketing Sandbox. In here, there is actually a, a folder called Lars, and in here there's a folder called uh, Ask Lars Live. Now, that one is empty right now, and I did this on purpose, so hopefully most of you guys see kind of like the workflow. Now, I'm going to open up, in my case here, my... Um, my Windows Explorer. Um, you guys are all familiar with that. Now, what you do with Fusion Team is you actually end up getting the same access inside of your Fusion Team in here. So there you will see <clears throat> it's the same Tech Marketing Sandbox. I opened that one up and that was the last folder. That's this one. And then there is a Ask Last Live in here and there's nothing in here. Now, what I'm gonna do in here is I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna create a new folder. I'm gonna call this one Paul and and so do that, you will actually see that we are getting, that things are happening inside of Fusion. So this is happening uh, live. So I'm gonna call this one clay model in there, right? Now in here, in this folder, um, I could just click here and refresh. Let's just refresh, there is Paul's, um, Paul's folder. Now in here, I'm gonna create two folders for you, Paul. I'm gonna create one that I'm gonna call my inventor files, right? Uh, because you prefer to use Inventor, which is fine. And I'm going to call one here, I'm going to call Fusion 360 files, okay? 
So I think so far with me, you feel pretty comfortable. You're inside of kind of like your standard Windows folder structure, and you're kind of creating what Paul talked about uh, in this regard, these different uh, file structures. Now, what I did was I actually fired up Inventor because that is what uh, Paul is using. And I modeled up two files. I haven't saved these files out yet. One is called part one. What was kind of like a, because one of the things that Paul is talking about is that he has part that both needs to be milled and need to be turned. So I also made kind of like a cylinder part uh, in here, okay? Now, I, for one thing I just wanted to say quickly, Paul, make sure, do you just have a single seat of inventor or do you actually have the design and manufacturing collection? Because if you have design and manufacturing collection, you actually do have CAM right in here, but it's the same CAM that is inside of Fusion 360. So you could actually save the whole Fusion 360 thing if, if you want to. So you got to check on that. But if you don't, now I have modeled up my, my parts inside of Inventor because Paul prefers Inventor. I'm going to hit save. And then I'm going to navigate to uh, my, uh, my Fusion 360 team. Sitting right there, tech marketing. We had on the Lars, we had an S Glass Live. And here's Paul's clay model. We just created that one. And in the Inventor folder, I'm going to save this IPT as my model base, maybe. We call it that and hit save to that. And uh, it gives me that I don't have an active project, but it's fine. I'm just going to say yes to that. And um, in my part two folder here, I'm going to do the same thing. Uh, let's go to that um, Fusion team. And Lars and here, gray model inside that vendor file. Let them see we have the model base. We're going to call that one round just so we can kind of distinguish them out. Okay, this is all we need to do with uh, with Inventor. So let's just uh, hide that out. Now, if we go into inside of here in Windows Explorer, you will now see these files are sitting here. So this lets you navigate just like uh, you would um, how you're probably doing it right now, Paul, in your with your with your inventor models. We just saved them right out on, on Fusion Team. Now I'm going to hide this for a second. Let's double click on uh, Paul's folder here inside of Fusion. And there you have our two folder structures and then open up the inventor mo model. And there are the two folders. Now, um, if we are going to use the cam inside of Fusion 360, all we really have to do is double click and open up uh, these files inside of Fusion 360. Now, this is pretty neat right now because as we're opening up these files, Right now, Paul, we're actually not, we did not convert this Inventor file into a Fusion 360 right now. This is one of the powers of Inventor and Fusion 360 being in Autodesk is that we're using AnyCAD. So uh, this is actually, we're looking at your Inventor file right now. But it's kind of just wild to me. But what we could do now is hit Manufacture. We can set up our uh, work coordinate system here. Uh, so we get that and we can now apply, uh, maybe we do a 2D adaptive on this. Uh, let's select the tool. I don't know what we're going to do here. Whatever, whatever fits, whatever fits in here. I'm not sure. There we go. Here's our tool path inside of Fusion 360. You can now go and post that out to your machine, right? Now, um, we applied the tool path to the Fusion 360 model, but... Um, we haven't saved the file yet. So now when I go and hit save, then now it is, when we're saving it, it is going to convert this file into a Fusion 360 file because it's going to contain all this tool pen. So now we can just call this, maybe we call this our Fusion model base. And um, and then we're just, instead of putting it in, in the inventor file, we're just going to go back here to Paul's clay model double click on and bring it into the Fusion 360 file right there. And now that has been saved. So we are actually not altering your models. Now, what is really cool about this right now, Paul, is that if I actually go back into Inventor um, and I make changes to this Inventor file, <laughs> it will actually update inside of this Fusion file um, in here, but not to um, our this file here, of course, that's now been saved out. We've broken kind of the link, but that's how I would do it. Now I have right out here in my, 
in my space. And you can see here, if I go back into my downloads folder on my Windows machine, if I scroll down, I click on this uh, link here, you will now, and I go back into it, you will see that all this is kind of living uh, out on, I'm looking out on the cloud right now. So there's Paul's Clay model. There's our two inventor files. And if I go back again, there's our Fusion 360 file with the tool pack. This here is absolutely, um, it's absolutely amazing. This is the best way by no doubt to do this. Um, make sure you go out and read Kaching's blog post. Just Google Fusion 360 blog and uh, the, Ju the June, sorry, not July. Oh yeah, this is July. It's just June up here in the, <laughs> that's a mistake. July 24th, find this blog post and you can find all the information about doing that. Um, it is absolutely awesome. It's amazing. I love it. I think it's fantastic. Um, Paul, I hope that you found that useful. If you do, thumbs up. If you don't, be honest, thumbs down. And Paul or anybody else or anything to add to this, uh, put that in the comments there. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, I would truly appreciate that. Uh, that would mean the, the world to me. But this whole Fusion team and connecting this, kind of wish that this had been like this in the beginning uh, because Fusion team gives you all different kinds of uh, different functionalities, including working directly with your uh, with the stuff on your desktop, like Inventor. <laughs> All right, next one. Um, so that was awesome. Next one is uh, from Guy. And uh, this one here is just as awesome as uh, the last one from Paul, I think. Like I said, um, this, uh, this week's uh, live streams, um, they're going to be amazing. I'm going to have a hard time picking seven favorites. Um, this one here is um, about actually making what looks like a violin. It's on a fusion. That's awesome. Now the question is, and um, and guy actually sent me. Whoops, uh, sent me a screenshot. Let's go back into here, and let me just open up this image. Guy sends me this image here, um, and um, talking about how he has a spline here, and he has the spline here, and he's looking for a spline to go between here. Uh, that is kind of like in relationship to the two. Um, now I'm going to show I'm I'm, I'm going to show you how I would do that, guy. But I'm actually I actually don't think I would. So the guy is talking about he want a loft between uh, these shapes. I would actually probably use sculpt, and I'm going to show you that too because um, <laughs> why not? So uh, let me just this was infusion team. I'm going to switch out of this. I'm actually going to get out of this, and I'm going to go back to my my own uh, individual account. What I should, you can actually import all this over to Fusion Team, all your different libraries, and that's what I should do, but I haven't had the time to do that. I'm, I'll get to it. This is a weekend project for me now. All right, um, Guy, so uh, let me just emulate what you kind of have here. I would, but I would take, I would use symmetry, of course. So I'm just gonna move this over my screen so I can just kind of like, on my second screen so I can take a look at it. Um, I'm gonna start out by creating a line here. I don't know how long. How long is a violin? Somebody tell me that. Uh, and then I'm gonna use the spline tool and I'm gonna do about the same, I'm gonna do the same points you had, but I'm not gonna make it as pretty probably as you did, guy. So there we have kind of like the first spline segments. I'm gonna make sure this is, these two are horizontal here. And then maybe I'll start moving some of these points over. So what I have is kind of the outer of uh, the outer of a guy's spline points. Here I have kind of done the same thing here, and uh, and what you will see that guy actually did. Uh, what I favor is when he was all done, he right clicked and he actually fixed it. That's why his is green. Now then he also has a kind of an inside in here. So uh, so let's do that quick. Another spline point. So he has fewer spline points and that one looks something like that. Okay, um, so what Guy is asking is, I always like to get these um, normal, is how do I now make a transition between the two? Because Guy is trying to loft between these. I would imagine that the guy want to go in and do some surface 
lofting uh, in here, I would imagine. Um, the only way that I really know how to do this, um, I don't know that there's a really good way to do this guy, would be, um, I would probably, uh, so now we did all this in one sketch, I would probably start creating some helping geometry, right? So <clears throat> you could, you could potentially, you know, go in and create line geometry from these two points. And uh, if you select it, you could make it a construction geometry and you could kind of line up these points and start a spline from here. Make sure it goes through that uh, midpoint, that midpoint, that midpoint and help some helping geometry. And you could do that. That is probably uh, the best way that I could think about doing this guy. But I wouldn't do this in the first place. I would use sculpt. Um, so this here is, uh, to me, just, I'm, I'm, this just yells sculpt to me. But I think you're trying to achieve is kind of like this Kong, I don't know, convex shape, concave, convex, convex shape. So this is what I would do. I would use this as a reference, um, but I would go into the uh, sculpt environment in here. I would create kind of like a plane geometry, and this is not going to be perfect. Uh, like I've said before, inside of the sculpt environment, um, it's really about how much time you're spending in here to make things perfect. But I would probably go in here and, uh, and create something that maybe looks... I don't know how many I want in here, something like this. Um, so this here is um, is kind of flat on this. And I hope that this kind of like maybe just inspires you to, to think about this guy. Um, and I would go in and um, I would probably just select this edge. Let's go into the side view here and let's start pulling that up a little bit there. Um, maybe we want more, we probably want more like a shape like that. You could see that kind of, what do you think guy? I, I mean, like, I don't know much about violins. Um, so kind of pulling up that, what I think that that's what you, you kind of want to loft is kind of this shape, right? Um, and then at this point, you could, and this is not going to be accurate either, but um, this is probably the easiest way to do this. If I double click on this face and do that edit form, and you might have to watch some more of my uh, of my my sculpt environments, but you can kind of start playing. And what I'm really looking at here is probably trying to match to follow that shape you had on the outside. Now I could, if I if I hold down uh, my Alt key and I grab this one, I can actually kind of make more segments and I can kind of start twisting uh, more holding out all key and I'm kind of twisting this to be somewhat um, somewhat perpendicular in some regard to this. I might have to come back and, and select some more but I think you kind of probably going to start getting what I'm, I'm trying to do here um, so hold down all, you can add more faces. And I'm kind of like just trying to, to make this somewhat close and, and make it somewhat uh, perpendicular. Now, if I wanted to, I could go back and double click on this edge uh, and I could start dragging this out. So I'm kind of trying to follow uh, these edges and, um, and, and follow the shape you have down here, okay? Now, when you look at this now, you will see from the side view that I'm really starting to, I'm, I'm getting that shape that you want probably in here. Um, now, I've said this before, when it comes to sculpting, um, the more time you, you spent on uh, playing with a lot of these, you can even go into points in here, uh, the more time you spent to kind of like correcting the shape and this takes practice um the more you're doing with that the better it's gonna get but what i would probably do in the end i would keep on doing this um all the way all the way around um all the way around here so at this point i might try to just kind of like creating 
more of a twist here. Um, maybe I'll, I even kind of go up on this point here and try to kind of bring that segment back. Double click on that, hold down though. And, and I could sit here literally for hours and make, and that's what I would do, by the way, uh, guys. I would sit here for hours and just kind of play around with this and make it uh, about as smooth as could. But what I would do in the end, so now you can kind of see how we, we get this, this texture. Um, I would create another one of these on that same plane. Um, and I would draw one rectangle up, kind of more of a flat segment there. Um, I'm gonna say okay to that. Actually, let me do one more of those. Do that one more time because what I actually would do is I would add some, draw one up here and uh, maybe not this way. Oops, sorry. <laughs> what I want to show you before I finish this, I'll do one more. I want to put some more segments in here um, and then so now I have I just created another flat one down there now I'm gonna take that one and I'm gonna move it up to uh, kind of the same height uh, of the other one you just saw ah. I'm trying to select the whole thing without selecting what we just had there we go um, let me just move that up to about the same height as maybe a little bit higher. So now that is sitting up there. Um, so now what we could actually do um, is select this edge, maybe make this a little wider. Maybe I add another segment in here. Um, so now what I would do here is I would start using uh, the weld vertices, not vertices. I would use the I would use merge edges and then now I could go in here and say this these three edges here I want to work those three with these edges here hit OK right so now you can kind of see how uh, that is merging together I can go back in here and see repeat merge edges so I want to err uh, these we here, see how my card is moving or something going on with a space mouse, merge these three together. Um, so you can kind of start seeing how I am actually merging these two edges with these two edges here. Okay, and you could continue down this path. What you're seeing I'm getting um, here, of course, is kind of what you are, are looking at. You could just continue uh, literally down, literally down this edge right now. You could go back in, right click edit form. We can select these four edges again, hit down your alt key, and now we could keep on kind of working, working on all this. And then in the end, we could go down and we could, uh, we could thicken all this out. But this is how I would, would do what you're trying to do guy and I think you're gonna find this um, I think you're gonna find this a lot more continuous a lot more smooth uh, a lot more hopefully hopefully a lot more awesome what do you think guy thumbs up if you like this thumbs down if you don't that's okay love the comments anybody have anything to add to this um, yeah and then in the end I would of course mirror it over for the symmetry uh, sake all right good stuff uh, here for a Sunday all right the next one is from Bjorn Bjorn is from Sweden. Oh, my some Sweden guys. All right, so uh, Bjorn is saying, how are you doing, Mr. Christensen? I'm doing great, Bjorn, how are you? Um, I have a question about um, the small tool tips that comes up uh, inside of Fusion, but there's not one for constraints. Um, and that is apparently what Bjorn, Bjorn is struggling with. Let me talk about what we're talking about. Let me talk about what we're talking about. Huh. If you go in here to any one of these and you hover over them, you see that little window that pops up with uh, with some tips and tricks. Well, let's go ahead and open a new 
image here. If you go into a sketch and you hover over the constraint, there's nothing uh, coming out here. But if you go over to maybe modify and you get like a little tool through it there, you get a little explanation next to these. Why are there not one to, to these here? I do believe, and I'm not 100% sure about this Bjorn, but I there's no way to turn it on. I do believe that this is actually all my good friend and colleague, Mike Mataras fault from the campsite, because this is what Mike, I believe was the guy who started this with the cam long, long time ago. It's the same thing inside of Inventor. Um, and uh, the, the other Fusion guys kind of like picked up on this because everybody loves how Mike put these awesome descriptions in there, so uh, shout out to Mike, who actually also have a YouTube channel for any, anybody who want to learn about CAM. Um, but uh, there is not one under uh, the standard uh, Fusion uh, constraints yet. Uh, so um, you are right, Bjorn, there's not that. I did do, if you go into my playlists, and if you go into one of the first Lars Lives, let's just shut this guy up. Um, hang on a second. If you go in to this list here, oh, double click on it, sorry. Uh, one of the first ones I did, this one here. So last live 06, uh, that one there, I actually went in and I did a bunch of explanation on, um, on, all, uh, on all the different um, constraints commands so that might find you might find that helpful Bjorn, but yes um i think that they're working on it i hope they're working on it and they come back with it uh, soon all right if you like that Bjorn, thumbs up hope you find the video useful next video is from rob hunter all right rob uh great youtube channel and i'm learning loads that's awesome that is the purpose just trying to add some more value to your fusion 360 experience that's why i'm doing this um, so I'm wondering if you can help. Uh, so Rob is trying to bring in a Rogowski profile. I had to Google it. <laughs> so did I, Rob. Don't feel bad about that. I'm trying to bring it in as a CSV file. So as an Excel file, um, uh, but he gets an issue. So, uh, let's take a look at this because I think I can help you fairly easily. So, um, Rob sent me his CVS file. Let me open it up here in Excel. One, two, three, four, it opens up in Excel. He sent me this uh, Excel file here. And um, when he goes to import it, what you can actually do inside of Fusion, you can import an, a, a, um, a file. All you're gonna do is go to tools up here, go to add-ins, click script and add-ins, Go down to import spline CVS and then hit run. And then it's going to look for a CVS file. What is, uh, what is, what is uh, Rob Hunter's here? Double click on it, but he gets this warning that says there's no valid points. So I get the same error as you, Rob, so you shouldn't feel uh, too bad about it. But the fix is actually fairly simple. Uh, when you're trying to bring in um, a CVS file into to Fusion, it is looking for an X, Y, and Z, Z direction. Um, and you don't have a Z. So I'm going to go ahead here and say zero. And I'm going to grab that little sucker and I'm going to drag that all the way down there. Now you actually have three coordinates, X, Y, and Z, and Z. So let's save this. Do that. Let's go back into the add-in. Scripts and add-ins, go into import CVS file, hit run, there's the file, and there is uh, your imported, uh, what was it called? Rogowski uh, profile. So that was, a, uh, that was a very easy fix uh, on that one, Rob. Hope that was useful. You just needed to get those zeros in there, whatever you wanted that uh, Z value to be. If you like this, thumbs up. If you didn't, that's okay. Thumbs down. Uh, and as always, I love your comments. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, it would truly mean the world to me if you did. And then if you hit that little bell icon, you will get the notifications. Um, you know, for us YouTube, a subscribe counts. It's just kind of like what we can't stop looking at. And it makes us so happy when that goes up.
All right, uh, let's jump to the next one. Some good ones, these ones, isn't it? Next one is Cam. Uh, and uh, this one here is a really good Cam one, I think. Uh, this from Grace John. Grace John, I think. Sorry if I mispronounce your name. Um, Grace John sent me a, uh, and also sent me a picture. Um, so let's look at this file here. Um, this is actually an interesting one that I think that many people would uh, would agree with. Could be a little. Uh... So what Great John has is he has this model here. He has a 10 degree chamfer on the part. Then he has two openings. And if you look, you can kind of see how the 3D tool pad is rolling over uh, everything. And he really just wants, he really just wants this 10 degree chamfer to be done with a ball and mill. Uh, I don't blame you. I want to show, I'm going to take the opportunity to go a little bit further and show a couple of different things with this, I think. Um, so let's start out by modeling up uh, Great John's, I hope that's your pronounce your names, uh, profile. So I'm going to open up inside uh, Fusion. Let's do a line up here. I don't know how big we're going to make this. I don't know. I, so I have no idea how big your model is. <laughs> um 50 probably fits out let's get that um 10 degrees in there let's what am i trying to do here modeling up on the fly let's make sure that this is 10 degrees 10 degrees and uh i'm just gonna throw some dimensions on this one just so it gets fully defined here okay let's extrude down um on the part here goes down like that and then um there was a couple of openings that kind of like are in the way so let's do those p for projects so like this edge here and i'm just going to throw in a couple of rectangles to simulate a little bit what um what we have here all right so we have this here now if we go in and we just really want to take a ball end mill and we just want to machine this 10 degrees with a ball end mill. But uh, what happens in CAM is we go into manufacture and we go in and let's create a, um, a Z setup. And I'm fine with this. I'm not going to mess with that. Um, I would probably use a um, probably use a parallel cut for this. And let's go in and select a cutter. Now, if you're following uh, my videos, you know that I always talk about um, that whenever you're doing three axis tool pass, select a little bit bigger color than that. What's the date we have? A 10? Okay. Um, that whenever we are doing a three axis tool pass, don't do any other settings. So select your tool, hit OK, and let's see what we get. Okay, that is nothing near what we want, but I want to walk through this and show a couple of different ways on how we can do this because that's where I think people learn most when they see me kind of like how I troubleshoot. So the first thing I noticed is I definitely want this toolpath to go up and down. Um, that was what uh, Great Sean also had. So I'm going to right click and hit edit and I'm going to go in and, and notice how I'm going to try just to make, I'm going to go to the passes tab and I'm going to change this to 90 degrees. I'm really just going to try to make changes one at the time uh so now this one is going in the right direction um but we can see that it's machining uh the top now grochan grochan whatever you pronounce your name talked about how you can use the void surfaces and things like that but that and and to grochan's um uh, email is actually not what i prefer to do so you have a void control and i agree with grochan on that there is a cool feature in here that you maybe don't know about if you go in and edit, and that is you can actually control slopes under the geometry. So you will see right now it machines everything between 90 and zero. So in a crazy fashion, if I go in here and I say 1% or 1 degree and hit OK, now you will see that we just eliminated absolutely everything uh, that is um, that is uh, flat because we put that one degree. Now you notice that it actually also traces a tool path around over here on on the edges. Um, and you might ask yourself that could possibly be 
um, because that it does see that as a 90 degrees. Let's go in and, and edit this one just for the heck of it. And let's make this one 89 and see what happens then. That doesn't change this. So this overlay here is probably just uh, a transition because of machining over that. Now you've also noticed that if I go in here and I simulate this, go to the side view. If we simulate this, and I might actually I'll bring to, I don't know if my color is long enough to get down there. Uh, but if I go in here and I simulate this, that it only machines to about there. Why is this only machining just to rare? That is actually, I'm going to leave it right here for now. If we go in and edit this tool path again, it's because if we go to the boundary conditions, we have it set here to tool command to tool center of the boundary. And the boundary is the silhouette. Now, silhouette is literally like if you flash a, a flashlight down from the top of the part, what we're looking at right now, because that's our Z direction, the silhouette here. Um, it's it's seeing that silhouette boundary, and then we are telling it that the tool cannot go past that with the center. See how it says tool center boundary? Um, so the tool can actually not go past this boundary right now. That's why, okay, again from the side, that if I go in to uh, hit the simulate button, that that tool will not go over that. Now we can override that with one command in there. And then this one, contact boundary. Now, I just talked about in a previous video uh, section here about uh, Mike Mataris uh, pop-outs uh, coming out here. But we're going to select this uh, here. And now when I hit OK, now notice that now the tool path will absolutely go all the way down to the ads because it overrides it because now... When we go in and simulate this, coming down here, is that now it will be tangent to this machining edge, and it would actually come down to be tangent with it. And we are getting closer uh, in here to what we actually want right now. Now, one thing that you will see it did was it machined on the back side because it still kind of sees these work here. So now we could go in and do actually a boundary selection. Um, and a boundary selection on this part would be to go in and say selection. And then I'm going to select this edge, but it select is the weird X. I'm going to reselect it. And now we could actually walk around and just select the boundary that we want. Boom. And hit the little green check mark there. And now you will see that it's not going to machine uh, on the back side. It is now contained within, uh, within this. And this is what, this is actually not really what Great John want. But this is how you would machine and get this tool path the way you want with the openings. Because what Great John actually says in his email, you had no way to know this, <laughs> is that... Um, he actually just want to machine this whole phase and don't, and was going to put in these pockets afterwards. Okay. So a couple of different ways you could do that. Wow. I'm throwing so much stuff here. Uh, but I wanted to show how you could do this. If this is the model you get, this would be the right tool path for machining this. Now, if you're putting in the pockets afterwards, one way to do this would be go to back to the design. Of course, we could just roll back to where this does not happen, right? And then we could go back into the manufacturer and let's just apply a new parallel tool path, same cutter. We know that, um, that we want it to be 90 degrees. We know that we want to put the slope in here, one degree here, 80, oops, 89 here. And uh, contact boundary, let's try to hit OK. And then we get pretty much the same perfect tool pad there. Now it does go on the outside there. So let's go back in and do the selection. And I'm really just going to select. Oops. 
selection, select it again. And I'm literally just going to select these boundaries there. Hit the green check mark. So there you go on that, uh, Grochan. And the last option just to, that I think I've covered just about all I can think of in, uh, in two seconds. You could also, if you wanted to, to machine this face while you didn't have this rolled back, you could go into the surface tool path. You could go in and hit offset. You could select this face. Don't put any offset distance in, just hit enter. Now that would have given you a surface body Let's roll all the way back to the end here. You have that surface body there. Go back into manufacture. And then in your setup, you could exit out of this. Just select that surface. And now uh, when you go in to do your, um, your parallel cuts, it will only see that surface. Again, we have to change the pass uh, direction here to 90. And I can't remember what else we would need to have to change. Uh, edit that. So this is probably the fastest way to do this. And boom, now you have that same tool pad. So a lot of different ways to get this. This should be good for a, uh, a Cam Friday. A lot of different options to receive the same result. But hopefully you saw, you saw three different things. Hopefully this was useful. Thumbs down if not. Comments. Yeah, a good, uh, a good way to do that. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed. I hope this is useful. Let's move on. All right, where did I go here in uh, our selection? Next one here is from JT. Hey, JT. Uh, oh, this is a good one for anybody doing uh, 3D printing. This is a 3D printer one that I think is really good. Um, all right, this is from JT. He says, I have been uh, subscribed to your videos. Now that he found a video by a guy named Adam James, and you should definitely go and check out Adam James. So let me just go back here. Let's open up a new file. And uh, Adam James, so that is his, uh, his YouTube channel, Adam James. Maybe search SnapFit and Fusion 360. Hit the subscribe button. Uh, people love this. I don't know why he got three uh, that is not deserved. Uh, James, if you're watching this, absolutely superb. superb. Uh, but he's talking about making kind of a snap fit on this model for 3D printing. So again, you should go and check out this YouTube channel. Check out this video. Great job, Adam. If you're watching these videos, man, that is an awesome. Love to see more stuff from you. Uh, but uh, the one that JT is talking about that is different from this is doing this on a cylinder. Ha. Um, because the way that Adam does it is probably the way I would do it too is uh, projecting uh, some edges and uh, just using the extrude function. But since you now are going from a square box to a round cylinder, JT... I don't blame you for struggling. Let's go in and do some. Uh, let's go in and do some three D printing here. Uh, so, let's make a canister first. So I'm gonna go in. I'm gonna make this a multi body kind of part. Um, so I'm gonna right click here and uh, and do a. Uh, and this would actually also answer I think Justin's um, question. So I'm gonna create a new component. And in this one here, I am going to open up a sketch, and it's gonna be a cylinder. So let's make something that is, I don't know, 100 millimeters in diameter. Let's extrude this up. Um, so we're gonna make this fancy cylinder in here. Let's make it 200 millimeters tall. And uh, I'm gonna use the shell command to make this a, uh, a cylinder here, 10 millimeters in, uh, in cylinder like this. Now, um, this, since this is gonna be a cylinder that we're gonna be be using, we're gonna add some fillets later on. But this is the, the first one. Now we're gonna create a lid for this and there's gonna be this snap fit lid in here. So I'm gonna create a new component. Oh, let's just rename this. Call this base. Let's right click and say new component and make this lid, okay? And uh, we're gonna open up a new sketch and let's do this lid up here. Now I'm gonna hit P for project. And I'm gonna borrow uh, that uh, that edge there for for my lid. Now um, 
in Adam's video, Adam is talking about he likes a tolerance about a half a millimeter on, on his 3D printer. So I'm actually going to emulate that uh, in here. So I'm going to hit O for offset. And I am going to add in a half a millimeter in here. This really depends on what your, what your printer uh, is into. And I am actually going to do another offset for the outside of the lids. Again, um, and you can't offset the, uh, an offset of offsets. I'm going to have to select the inside edge here. Oops, hang on. What did I do? O for offset. And make sure we get the right ads. And I'm going to do the outside of the lid. Let's do that. A 10 millimeter lid right there. Now, just to make sure there's no confusion, I am going to hit Q for press pull, and I'm going to make sure that I select that outer edge there, and I'm going to make our tab down here. Now, I don't know how long we're going to make this cover that goes over here, um, but I'm going to make it 20 millimeters like that. And then I'm still in the component lid. I'm actually going to do another extrude, and I'm going to select that inside uh, platform we had in here. We should actually be able to select the whole thing here. Go the other way out. Oh, maybe not. Uh, let's open a new sketch. Select here and let's hit P for project. Select that one, we can definitely do that. Hit Q, and then I'm just going to give this some thickness here. And these will merge together if I have joined. So let's just make the lid maybe 5 millimeters thick. Okay, so that all became, became one. So what do we have now? <laughs> this was a lot of stuff. We have a base uh, here, right? So that's the base. We have the lid going over here. And then we have, we put it together, we kind of had this lid. Now we should have... Uh, a gap in there. If you go in and say um, inspect, there's something talking about 3D mouse. It's moving. Uh, and let's do a, see how it's moved. The part is rolling on the screen. That's annoying. Section analysis. And uh, let's just turn the audio on and let's do a section of here. And I should definitely see a gap in here. Okay, good. There is a gap. All right. Uh, now, drives me nuts. Not. Uh, we can turn the analysis on. Now we're actually gonna do uh, the. We're gonna do the the. Um, what are we calling it again? The snap fit, and I'm gonna do that on the base first. I'm gonna activate the base, and uh, I am gonna open a sketch on the side view here. We're gonna use revolve again. Remember that what we're trying to do here is actually um, a, uh, a a snap ring. So we can't project. We're going to do the revolve. So I'm going to hit P for project. And I'm just going to select, I'm not going to select that top component. I'm going to tie the lid on. I'm going to select that. Um, and let's dry, dr draw up our snap fitting. So I'm going to go ahead here on the side here. And I'm just going to draw up something that's going to be my snap fitting right there and close that off. Um, and uh, let's make sure that this here is some of that. Let's do this. Um, and uh, in, I'm gonna hit alpha line, I'm gonna find the midpoint here. Wow, that mouse really annoys me that it's, it is moving on me. I wanna hold it. I can't hold my hand on it. Um, and then we could do a um, relationship to that. D for dimension. Now again, Adam did this as a, uh, 45 degree for his uh, and we probably just have to make sure that we don't make this too long um, so let's just make this 10 and be what I mentioned eight maybe. like this is this good I think this is good let's turn the lid back on and kind of see the lid sitting there maybe we actually want it to be kind of like a little bit more center so we could just play with this dimension here let's make it 15 where's the lid now that's good enough that's good enough for us uh, so now i am going to go into the revolve and we're going to select this profile here and it's going to be over the center dimension of that 
So now we have uh, this, this lid here, right? Turn the top lid on. And actually you could do something pretty cool here if you haven't done this before. We could go into inspect and you could do an interference. And if we select the two components like this and click the little compute, yep, it actually sees here that, oops. Interfere this body. Compute. I don't know why I'm not showing up in red again, but it actually finds that um, that interference. Now, here's what I would do uh, that I think that some people is going to find interesting is I would use the combine tool. I would set this to jaw, uh, to cut. My target body is going to be the lid, right? Um, ooh, I definitely have a issue with. Uh, I don't see the graphic representation here, um, and the. the it's going to make this a little harder. The tool body is going to be this. Oh, now it's selecting it. Okay. Um, and I'm going to say key tools. Hit OK. Now what I got, if I just turn the base off, is you will see that I actually have that ring in there. And if we turn this section analysis back on, you will also see that we have that ring in there. But you will see in here that we have the clearance but we don't have the clearance on the lit, or on the snap fit yet. So uh, that is a little bit uh, of a problem. Um, so let's go in and fix that. I'm gonna turn my section analysis off again. I'm actually just gonna go into the lid, right? And uh, if we go in here, we can actually just select the face. And if we hit Q, we can actually start adding or offsetting these faces. So I'm really going to go minus 0.5 on one face, go up to the other 45 there, hit Q, and I'm going to go minus 0.5. And just like that, I have offset those two faces out 0.5. So if we go back into our base again, and let's go in and turn the, the section analysis back on, you will now see that we have that half uh, millimeter of um, half millimeter of um, of clearance. Uh, so the last thing we would do on this model is let's uh, get out of the section analysis. Is let's add uh, some. Actually, you can either add some chamfers or some fillets. I would probably add some chamfers to this part. So let's try a one. Uh, millimeter chamfer to that would probably be good um, right there just to make that look nice um, and let's do that to the other end too just because um, that makes sense repeat chamfer one millimeter to that gonna drive me nuts with these um, <laughs> with uh, this mouse moving I can't work without it though okay um, and then I would add some fillets to, um, to this, so I'll probably add a small little fill in here. Let's try 0.5. That's kind of like our clearance. Remember that one. Um, and then I would add another fill to this one here. Maybe make that one. How does it look at two? Oh, two. Uh, one. Okay. And then let's go back into the lid. And let's do the same thing to this. Now, um, I would definitely make sure that I added a, uh, a chamfer on this one. And uh, this one should definitely minimum be one. Um, I might even consider, how does it look at two? Because that could that would help that thing uh, going on there. And then we can go back into our fillet. And this one here, we make that one. One also, and this is more, actually, you know, the only reason I would probably add a fillet in here would probably do um, to do a little bit of, uh, of um, to do a little bit of clearance. Um, but actually, you know what? I might only uh, to, to do some strength. But I might actually make that one a little bit less because I know that this is where the printer is going to struggle the most with uh, with that with that clearance. If we do that, and we turn this back on here. 
I should actually also add, I also want a, let's just go back to the lid here. Uh, let's add a, um, a chamfer on here and here and make that one. And in here, we should absolutely also add uh, a little bit of strength. That's why we're putting the fillets in, it's just for strength. Now we've done all that. Let's uh, turn the base back on and uh, let's go in here and do a, um, the analysis. This is your best friend at this point. So just go in and take a look and just see how we have all these different clearances in here. Uh, so that looks good. And of course, turn the analysis back on. You could go back in and use that interference tool to highlight these two. Don't, if you have included coincidence, you will see an interference on where they're touching on top. But here you will see no inferences. And this would be a perfect good model for this snap fit. Now, I would maybe consider doing another thing, guys. And that would be, if you look at turning the lid off, this might this would be something to play around with. This snap fit um, really has a lot of area to snap over, right? Uh, the more area you have, because it's round, you might consider um, to be a little bit creative. And what I mean by that is just to be a little bit advanced. You might go in here on the bottom and decide to cut away uh, some of these. So what I maybe would consider doing is to do something uh, like this here, I think. I would probably go in here and create um, something that looks... Um, what am I trying to do? I would do this. Hang on. Delete that. I would create something deeper dimension. I don't know what I'm trying to do. <laughs> 60. Let's create a, um, a line that goes out like this. Deeper dimension. And let's make this 60 degrees. And um, let's also deeper dimension. Also make that 60. Let's create a, um, now I am modeling on my feet here. Do that there. P for project. And let's go in and make sure we, we get uh, one of these edges. Let me turn the, I don't have the lid on. So this, here, I think. If I did that, let's do a cut. Let's cut this through here, right? So we kind of are cutting that. And uh, if we go in and we do, wow, it's annoying that that part is moving on me. I might have to uh, abandon this and, and, and go in the. Let's go in here, let's do a feature. I'm gonna select that feature, select an axis, gonna be that Z axis there. Um, and uh, if we did three of these, then you would end up getting three of these. This might help you cutting this down. You maybe have seen something like this done before. Now you could now uh, also add you would go in here and add some more. I would probably prefer uh, the chamfers on here uh, versus the fillet. But if you go in and do the fillet here, 0.5 on that, that would probably be good. Let's add another edges on this. I'm sorry that my 3D connection mouse is moving on me, what makes it a little hard. And let's make these also 0.5. I think that was all of them. There we go. That I think should be a, uh, a super good uh, snap fit uh, for this. What I'm actually gonna do here, 
Um, and this was for DAT. I'm actually going to save this file. I'm going to call this one DAT. Uh, so we make sure we have that one. And now my part stopped moving. And uh, then I'm just going to uh, quickly answer um, Justin's uh, question is when you have multiple files here, if I wanted to uh, get this into a 3D printer like this, how would I get multiple parts like we're having here uh, into, uh, into the 3D printer? And the best way to do that is uh, right click, say save as STL. Okay, and that's going to open up this dialog. You can say save it out at individual files. And then I'm just going to select the whole thing here. You can actually also select over here, I believe. Select them all. And uh, I'm going to select them like this. Hit save. Let's select this to STL JT version 1. Call it 3D print. Like this. Hit save. It's going to work like this. And now if we open up our downloads folder you will see that we have uh, these files here. And uh, heck, while we at it, let's open up the Cura because people's gonna ask me about this. <laughs> I've asked like five questions and uh, we almost, we're already an hour. Um, <laughs> this is going, this is going uh, typical. All right, hang on, I should have opened up Cura uh, first, sorry about that. Sorry about that. Cura is firing up. There is the the Cura here. Um, so now we can go and say open file. Let's open up one of them. Oh, that was a little big on my my 3D printer, huh? Um, and let's go ahead and open up the second one. So that comes in there. Now, I am not a Cura master, uh, but let's go ahead here. Make sure we get these two in on the folder there. Now, I would think uh, you tell me wrong. Um, we probably want to do it. We probably want to flip this one around, right? Now, there's... Now I 3D printer people is gonna be it's gonna be yelling at me right now. Okay, so that is good. Um, if I just spin this around, I'm within my build envelope. I can see that. Um, do I need support material uh, to uh, to print this up? I actually don't think I do. Um, so we set the infilter to, I'm going to turn off support. You can see support is not in here. I believe this is a layer height of maybe one. Let's hit slice. This is when, um, I am in my, not in my comfort zone with 3d printing, but hopefully somebody's looking at this right now and find this one, uh, super, super useful. So we're going to slice this. And I'm a little bit afraid about how long this is going to take to do. But you know what? I'm going to run this. Um, I'm going to run this and hope that the 45 degrees, it's going to take two days to do this. Do I really want support material to do that 45 degrees? Does that, is that needed? Because the problem I think I have, and I could probably, somebody correct me, but if I turn the, the extruder 2 on and slice this, I think this is going to take a lot longer to do um, because that is going to go in. I really want to do this size, though. Um, it's going to go in and do this. And I think it's going to put support material anywhere. And I don't know how to fix that because I haven't played enough with the Cura settings. But I might just also just bite the apple and do it all in... Uh, with the support material and then have to uh, to deal with the fact that it's going to take eight days to do this. Um, though that I'm leaving for the Fusion Academy, so it's going to take an extra day to do the support material. The preview here. 
It's going to mean it's going to put support material everywhere, right? Inside that core cavity. What do you guys think? See, do I really need support material to do this? To do that 45, guys? Is that needed? Somebody's commenting right now. So the right thing to do would probably to not print both of them right now and just print the lid and find out if I need the support material or not. That is probably what I would do. Um, I would bite the apple. Bite the apple? Is that what you say? Um, in here and say prepare this model here. Let's remove that. And if we're just trying this without the support, because if we can do it without the support material on this one, see, this is only going to take 13 hours. Um, then, um, then I know. I could also scale this down, right? Uh, you could also chop one of these in half. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and bite the, the bullet on this and say, let's just print this over the network without a without support material and I learn my lesson and I don't waste all the all the different uh, all the different material. Was this useful? This one is saying that it's ready. It's getting ready. <sighs> okay, maybe this got a little bit too long. I'm sorry, JT, if it did. I uh, hope I showed some really cool things. We'll see how this come out. I will print this one, um, but I'm, I'm actually not going to be able to show you the second one because I'm I'm traveling, which is going to take three days. I'm leaving too. All right, we're going to end this. We're going to end this segment right here. If you like uh, this, thumbs up. If you don't, that's okay. Thumbs down. Uh, we're over an hour, but I'm going to have to take uh, a couple of more here. So, subscribe. If you haven't subscribed, I would truly appreciate if subscribe to the channel. Next one here is from Jess. All right, Jess is saying, hey, Lars, love your videos. Thank you so much. Um, I am, could you go through the new, oh, actually, it was not Justin's uh, question I just asked. It was, um, it was actually Jess's. I'm sorry, now Justin is like, I didn't, you didn't ask my question. Um, can you walk through the new Effusion layout and how to use it? Uh, the toolbar have lost sheet metal modes, um, and I think it have been replaced with design mode instead. Yeah, so there isn't too much to go through in here. So this one is 3D printers getting ready to go. Uh, you're right. So what they did um, inside of Fusion is that they, they, they consolidated some of these. So this one here had to have sheet metal and things like that. But the Fusion development team um, were kind of like, well, uh, sheet metal is kind of like part of the design. So they just added these extra tabs up here, just really to, I think, to shorten down um, this drop down down here. So it didn't become so dang long as they're adding more and more stuff in here. So there's not really any too much new in here unless you just maybe got to go in and look at these new um, segments that has been added in here. They're still the same functions. They just kind of like been, been jumped around. I actually did do a, um, a video on the new uh, UI, talking a little bit about how you change it and things like that. You can definitely find that on, uh, on, on the YouTube. And then we just had the, the, the question I just answered about how would I do, uh, now the part is moving again. How would I do something like this uh, for at least for 3D printing, how I would save it out? If I was doing this for, for CAM, but it's also one of Jess's questions, you have a couple of different options here. You could either um, just do this as CAM and turn each component off, right? So you could bring this into the lathe, you could do this, you could turn this thing off, you could have another setup in CAM for this. Um, but there's actually also a function in here. If you click on here and uh, you go in um, to the crew, now I gotta think. Create, you can do a derived 
uh, of this, what means that you would create a new part from this, almost like copying this part, but still link back to this part. And then you could, uh, you could machine that. I hope that kind of answers your question, uh, Jess. Um, just kind of like it's going to skip a little bit over that one um, because I've talked about some of these uh, before. All right. Uh, next one here is um, from Shem. Shem is saying, hey, Lars, I am watching your YouTube channel since you started. Wow, that's been a while. <laughs> uh, my question is, how am I able to do nine bores? So I'm considering that nine holes through the center of a four feet long, two inch diameter in 32 degrees. Okay, so we got a four inch pipe, four inch, two inch uh, diameter pipe, and we want to put nine holes through it um, in 32 degrees. Now, here goes the printer. Um, yes, champ, that is an awesome uh, question. Let's go ahead and do that quick. So I'm going to start out by switching over to actually inches because you're talking about inches, you can always do that there. You can make it your default. Um, so let's start out by creating a sketch. And you set a two inch diameter pipe. So we're gonna make a two inch diameter. And I'm gonna do an O for offset. And uh, let's make it, um, maybe it's 200 thousandths um, there. And then Q, and you set four feet. You can actually type in F T in here. It'll become four feet. So there is our four. Um, that's our four inch two millimeter pipe, a two inch pipe. Now you want to put some holes pouring pores in this in a um, in a thirty two degree angle. You're gonna love this. I'm gonna turn the origin on so you can see. You can kind of like see this, and I'm gonna go into the inspection uh, into the construction tool. I'm going to find the one that is called a plane at an angle. I'm going to select that. Plane at an angle. I'm going to select the center line. And now you can see I can create a plane in 32 degrees. So now I can just sketch on that. So I'm going to create a sketch on that plane there. And now uh, maybe we draw a line. When we hit P for project. Actually, it should be on the center, right? So get a line from the origin. I'm going to create the line off the origin like that. And let's do a with constant relationship. Oops. An incident relationship between the origin and this point. And uh, let's just make this so that. All right, so now we kind of create a line down there because what I'm thinking you maybe want to do is you want to create a circle. You want to find the midpoint of that right there. And uh, then we can do whatever our diameter was. And I don't think you put uh, what diameter we wanted to make them. So let's make them one inch. One inch diameter. Okay. And we can hit Q. And select that profile there. And now you have a hole that is going in 32 degrees through there. Now, if you wanted to, you could go in and do a rectangular pattern and you could select that feature right there, select it along a direction, like that direction, and then just go along and maybe you want one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And there you go. That should answer your questions. Yep. I hope that that was useful. 3D printers running. Um, got all kinds of stuff going on. If you like these videos, thumbs up. If you don't, that is okay. Thumbs down. And as always, I love the comments. If you haven't subscribed, I appreciate that. All right. So that was one, two, three, four, five, six of these. What do you think of that? Is that good? It's about uh, an hour and 15 minutes. I think that that is where I'm going to end today. So this was some long ones. I didn't get to answer all of the, of the ones I wanted, but I hope that you found this useful. And until the next time.